How's it guys? It's Robert here and welcome to another video. Today I'm just going to be making a video on the Roth IRA versus TFSA and how Canadians are getting screwed over for obviously being Canadian and investing in their TFSA. So obviously you're going to max out your TFSA no matter what as you would your Roth IRA. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying how Canadians are a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to compound interest and I'll pretty much explain why. So pretty much, you know, Canada and USA, they're right beside each other in neighbor countries. I mean, everybody knows that. You just look at a map. So they both have the same contribution group. In the US, it's $6,500 now. Last year, it was $6,000. And in Canada, obviously, same thing. $6,500 this year, and last year, it was $6,000. But if you take the US the equivalent of what you're investing in Canadian, Canadians are obviously investing much, much less. And because they're basically like, you know, border, border, they're right there. Canadians should have a higher contribution limit to make it in line with Americans for like US dollar, because obviously, the US dollar is worth more than the Canadian dollar. So I just have it up here on Google. I'll put it up here on the screen. Uh, right now, uh, this is not... And this is not factoring in like any like brokerage fees or whatever. Like if you're to actually convert at a bank because you pay a little bit, uh, you obviously pay to convert your money. But at the market rate right now, it's $4,775.32 US dollars when it comes to converting 6,500 Canadian like today. There are like obviously Can um, Canadian dollar like uh, equivalents of like investments. For example, like the Vanguard S&P 500. If you buy VFV in Canada, um, that's pretty much the Canadian equivalent of VOO. And then also you pay a little bit of a higher expense ratio. Obviously it's not that much, it's 0.05%, but still like, you know, ugh. And plus, uh, when it comes to VT, man, oh my god, there's no Canadian equivalent of VT. The Canadian equivalent that's, I guess, close to it is VEQT. But the weightings are completely different from VT. So you have to convert to USD to buy VT, like, properly. That's actually, like, market cap weighted. Because if you look at VEQT, it's, like, 40% US, 30% Canadian. Like, it's completely, like, it's not even, like, you know, obviously VT, like, owning the entire world that market cap weights. And also, it's a higher expense ratio of 0.24%. Obviously, that's a lot better than mutual funds and stuff like that. Like, but still, you want to get, obviously, VT because it's lower expense ratio and it's actually market cap weighted. So there are some advantages to the TFSA compared to the uh, Roth IRA though, besides contribution limit. For example, in the Roth IRA, you cannot withdraw without uh, getting a penalty until you're 59 and a half and that penalty is 10%. In Canada, you can, uh, you know, take out money from your TFSA, but you can't put it back in and there's no penalty. So pretty much, obviously same thing in US, if you were to take out, you can't put it back in. Same thing in Canada, but there's no penalty for doing that. You can just do it whatever. Honestly, like as much as I don't like government regulation and stuff like, you know, that controls people's behavior, like basically in the United States is pretty much telling you uh, you gotta wait until you're 59 and a half obviously to take out money to, sorry to take money out of your Roth IRA but because people in general are so bad with personal finance that's probably like a rule that I just would not have a problem with just you know maybe like somewhere around 50 55 or whatever just because you know people they're so bad at saving and all that stuff so it's better really if there wasn't um, like you know a penalty if you did withdraw from your TFSA but you know, whatever. Another advantage from the TFSA is that your contribution, uh, like limit, like it was say six thousand dollars. Like, I mean, it was six thousand dollars last year. If you miss your contribution limit, it gets carried forward to the next year. So now this year, you can uh, contribute uh, twelve thousand five hundred dollars. That's just uh, assuming if you only missed twenty twenty two, and then obviously this year is sixty five hundred dollars. But in the U.S., if you miss your contribution limit, you can't carry it forward. So if you miss it. You're out of here. Another advantage though that the Roth IRA does have compared to the TFSA is you're putting money in your tax advantage accounts and you're disciplined, you're not gonna take that money out until you retire, re sorry, until you retire, right? But in the US, once you pass 50, you can start putting $7,000 into your uh, Roth IRA. I think now they upped it because obviously they upped it by $500 for, you know, your original contribution limit before you're 50, then obviously they didn't do that for uh, when you pass 50. I think now it's $7,500. But in Canada, it just stays the same. It doesn't change dep depending on your age. So, you know, that is definitely a big advantage that the Roth IRA has, for example, because if if you're you know disciplined you're not going to touch that money until you're 59 and a half it's better to obviously you know get that increased contribution room after you turn 50 whereas canadians they don't get anything for that another big advantage too that the roth ira has is that the roth ira was a, around a lot longer than the uh, canadian like tfsa the roth ira was introduced in like 1997 and obviously the contribution limit increased over time obviously because of the inflation tax which is why obviously now the uh, contribution room is 65 sorry 6500 and for the tfsa it was introduced in 2009 and if you look at the contribution room right now i'm going to put this up on the screen obviously. So looking at the contribution limit on the screen back in Canada, it was started off with $5,000 and went up to $5,500. And for some reason, one year it was $10,000. And then went back, to, back down to $5,500, then up to $6,000. And now it's at $6,500. You know, when it comes to the USA, they had it, what, 12 years beforehand. And even though the contribution limit was lower back then because the US dollar was much stronger, it was 2000 and 3000 and 4000 and 5000 All those years there, it's like a massive difference when it obviously comes to compound interest, even though obviously it's not $6,000. It is something like, it's, it's huge, all right? Like, let's be honest here. I mean, I'll put up the map somewhere, like what the Canadians missed out on. This is assuming if it was exa the exact same contribution room. But yeah, pretty much Canadians are getting uh, screwed over just because, I mean, they're, you know, they're right there, man. They're, 
the neighbor country, uh, the contribution limit should be the exact same when it comes to the cur currency conversion. And it should be like at like January 1st. Like honestly for Canadians, I mean, obviously it's not gonna be like variable, like where it's changing every single day what the contribution limit is gonna be. But you know, whatever the exchange rate is on January 1st, that should be the Canadian equivalent of what you're contributing to into your TFSA. But you know, sucks for them. I'm out here in Alaska banging on my Roth IRA and I'm just out here taking no mercy at all buying BP. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed. If you didn't do like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in three months.